This is a medical malpractice trial. In the middle of the trial, the defense lawyer brings in a doctor to testify on their behalf, a medical expert. And now his goal is to try and show that we don't have a valid case. But I have information about this particular doctor that I think is going to devastate him. I know that he was involved in recent riots and protests and he was arrested. Can I use that information about the fact that he was arrested to destroy this doctor's credibility? You want to know the answer? Come join me on this walk on this deserted island here in the middle of the Caribbean as I share with you the answer to that question. Hi, I'm Jerry Oginski. I'm a New York medical malpractice and personal injury attorney. The short answer is no, I can't use that information. However, I should caution and tell you that I can use some of that information. So what part of it can't I use? Well, I'll tell you what I can't use. I can't use the fact that this doctor was arrested as part of a roundup of people who were protesting during the course of these riots. That's what I cannot do. What else can I do? Can I ask him questions about the protest? Yes, I can. Can I ask him whether he was there? Yes, I can. Can I ask him factual questions about his involvement with the protests and the riots? Yes, I can. But if he denies it, now what do I do? Unless I have video of him, unless I have some other proof that he was there and was involved, where am I going with this? What does that have to do with the substance of his opinions explaining that our case and the claims that we are making is totally wrong? The reality is it doesn't have much to do with it at all, if any. So why is it that I then would want to go ahead and establish and tell the jury that this guy was arrested and now because he was arrested, you shouldn't believe what he has to say? Well, the thinking behind that, or at least the theory is, Hey, if this guy has been arrested, it means he likely has some sort of criminal background. It likely means he's not of the correct mindset to render proper medical opinions in this particular case. Well, that doesn't really fly because if this guy is licensed to practice medicine in the state of New York, whether he participated in a protest or not has nothing to do with his credentials and whether he is licensed to practice. In addition, if the doctor participated in protests, it has nothing to do with his qualifications and the fact that he is a board certified physician, that he spent many years training in an approved residency program. And now he goes ahead and takes this board certification exam, which is the highest level of certification a doctor can achieve in his particular specialty. Now it doesn't guarantee competence by passing this particular exam. It simply establishes a baseline knowledge of medicine in order to become qualified in a particular specialty. So what about the fact that this guy was arrested during the course of these protests, during the course of riots? What does that have to do with his testifying in this particular case? The answer is maybe nothing. However, here's something that you should know that you may not know. In order for me to establish that the doctor has some sort of criminal history, now in order for the jury to evaluate that and use it to impugn to show that he has very little credibility, if any, I have to be able to establish that this doctor either pled guilty to a significant crime or, or went to trial and was convicted, convicted of a crime, a serious crime. Now we're not talking about traffic violations here. We're talking about something substantial, whether it is assault, whether it is robbery, whether it's something like uh, attempted murder. Those are significant charges. Let's say it's Medicaid fraud, Medicare fraud. Those are substantial charges. And now if he pled guilty or he was convicted of a crime after a trial, guess what? I can always, always use the fact that the doctor was convicted of a crime, a serious crime to impugn his credibility because now the argument is, okay, if he has been convicted of a crime, he obviously had some criminal intent. I'm allowed to probe some of what he was charged with and whether or not he did time, he may have served probation. He may have been put in jail. That is all indicative and goes to the doctor's credibility. The fact that the doctor has been arrested is not conclusive proof that what the doctor is being charged with actually occurred or is true. It is obviously, we'd like to say it's some evidence of criminal wrongdoing because obviously the police would not have charged him with these crimes had they not believed that this actually occurred. However, the standard is 
not about whether or not the police had reasonable, probable cause to go ahead and arrest him, but rather whether he was convicted of a crime or whether he pled guilty to a crime. That is critically important. If neither one of those things occurred, I can't use the fact that he was arrested to establish that this doctor's credibility is not worthy of being believed. If a trial I were to ask the doctor, isn't it true, doctor, you participate in these riots? Well, I didn't participate in a riot, I participated in a lawful protest. Okay, now he's admitted being there. Doctor, isn't it true as part of being present for these protests, you were actually arrested? Objection, judge! And now what do you think the judge will do? The judge is going to sustain that objection. Why? Because the fact that he was arrested or was not arrested has no bearing whatsoever on the doctor's credibility, has no bearing on his credentials, and in fact has no what we call no probative value in terms of having the jury look at this proof to determine whether or not this doctor's testimony should be believed. If, on the other hand, I ask him the question, doctor, isn't it true that as part of these protests you pled guilty to a felony? He has to admit that. And if he doesn't admit it, I'm going to use other means in which to show the jury and to establish that this doctor was in fact convicted or pled guilty to this particular crime. A felony is a serious crime. And then the jury would be allowed to go ahead and infer that this doctor's credibility is shot. And if he lied about this one thing in his background, why should we believe him about anything else he's ever said? So why do I share this quick information with you? I share it with you just to open your eyes to what really happens in these medical malpractice cases, these accident cases, these wrongful death cases in New York. You know, I recognize you likely have questions or concerns, either that or you just want to see the beautiful scenery. No, I realize you likely have questions or concerns about your own matter. Well, if your matter did happen in New York, and you are thinking about bringing a lawsuit, but haven't done so yet because you still have questions that need to be answered, what I invite you to do is pick up the phone and call me. You know I answer questions like yours every single day and I'd love to chat with you. You can reach me at 516-487-8207 or by email at jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, at oginski-law.com. That's it for today's video. I'm Jerry Oginski. Have a wonderful day.